Hi there, everybody. It is I, Random Robin, and today we have a, a visual novel called Lovecraft from the same developer as Lost Girl. If anyone watched that, then that's that's that one. <laughs> um, with me, I have my friends Dingo Bat Flyer and uh, Mira, who most of you probably know as Smab. Hi. Uh, Dingo is unfortunately unable to watch this, but he will be here at, with, you know, just chatting it up with us. He'll be Jeez. here in metaphysical spirit. Yeah. He won't get to see his, this fine selection of beautiful characters in front of us. So. Dude. Sad. But anyway, I uh, hope everyone's doing good today, staying healthy and safe, and let's get started on this thing. Remember, this is a beta. This is not a complete version of Lovecraft. We hope you enjoy it. All right. Well, then let's uh Oh, whoa, 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 hold up. What is my name? Uh Random Oh, no, don't skip. Okay. Yeah. I think I just skipped a bunch of dialogue. Oops. Okay, well, I am Random Robin. Okay. Uh enter. Okay. All right then. That should be your name from here on out. Awesome. I don't know what else you said to me, but we're going from there. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and turn the... Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I was going to turn the volume up a little bit, but... Oh, I can. Just a wee bit. There we go. So that way everyone can enjoy the music. Okay, return. Okay. Random Robin. Travel safe, child. We will meet again when the time is right. Cool. It feels like I've been wandering, wandering these woods for years, yet not once have I seen the sun. Despite forests being places of flora and fauna, the world around me is devoid of both light and life. The only movement comes from the shadows. There's no wind in these woods. The darkness pulses like a heart. Ooh, fancy. I'm not afraid, though. Instead, I feel nothing. I assume it's better when I do the VTuber for things like this, because you can hear me a little clearer. I'm not sure where I'm going, <laughs> and yet I know I must keep walking forward. Ooh. What are these things? My mindless persistence ultimately pays off when I reach a clearing. The moon is finally visible. The light, a pale, almost paste pastel blue. To add, you know, in the English language is harder than, like, geometry the ethereal light shines down on three altars etched with runes of different colors to my right etchings run red with fresh blood the altar too is stained with it that sounds safe and healthy to my left the altar is covered in moss it looks like it rose from the ocean and was subsequently forgotten that's kind of sad sad altar in front, the runes glow with golden light, looped around the altar like chains. Alright. That sounds like an okay altar. No problems with that one. Not as bad as blood or ocean altar. Beneath my feet, the shadows once more stretch out. The altars call to me. Which altar should I choose? Oh, I can choose an altar, apparently. Hmm. What you got? Well, I got an uh, altar covered in blood. <laughs> an altar that's glowing gold with, like, chains on it. And then gold a, an ocean green altar. Or I can just say none of them. Hmm. I don't know. What do you two think? Gold! I don't know. I just... <laughs> gold? <laughs> Gold member. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Gold it is. I'll do gold. Something about the yellow altar calls me. Uh, well, it said it's gold a second ago. Whatever. As I get closer, the warm glow from the stone seems more and more inviting. <laughs> the shadows from the woods recoil back as if finding this particular shining more repulsive than that far f or that from the moon. I stop just in front of the stone altar. Without thinking, I reach out gently, the tips of my fingers running over the smooth surface. Ooh, I'll touch that altar real good. It's then that the dark ground underneath my feet explodes into view with piercing gold light. Oh no, 
Am I going to heaven? Oh, I might be going to heaven. Hello. <laughs> Where it had once been pitch black, the area is now lit up brightly. Okay, I think I might be dying and going to heaven. Where I had once been standing on dirt, I now stand on yellow brick. L liquid light seeping from the cracks. Oh, I got some li liquid light for you. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, so is mine. <laughs> However, it continues to get brighter. It, it's eventually hard to keep my eyes open. It continues to brighten until nothing I do will keep the light out. It's like it wants my body. Oh! Apparently me and the altar are uh, getting real close over here. Everyone, Even once my eyes are eventually reduced to powder, this now destructive force does not leave me. It floods my body from the inside outside in. Wait, did it just say my eyes turned to dust? Eventually there will be no difference between me and the once beautiful shine of the altar. I hear myself shriek to the skies I made to be one with the light. I think I just died. Oh. Oh, it was a dream. Gotcha. My eyes open sharply as the buzzing of my alarm clock pulls me from my strange dream. It's not the first time I've had that dream, but it has been a few months. Oh, okay, that's good. If I know one thing for sure, though, it's that my alarm clock could drive me insane far easier than any mind-breaking hell beast possibly could. Good to know. I swear, that sound should be illegal. It works, though, so I guess I shouldn't complain too much. I push myself out of bed and stretch slightly before slamming my hand on the off button of the clock. Also, who is there? Welcome, Jay. Yo, Jay, what's up? It's doing... time for the Boobalicious novel. Oh, yeah. Some possible waifu action for you, Jay. One of them's got a gas mask. What? What the fuck? Wait, hold on. Yeah, hold on. I'm doing a visual novel. <coughs> Anyone who's watching... Just describe those sweet, luscious bodies. Oh. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, so, anyone who's watching, this is my friend, the Slavic J-Leaf. Jo joining in on this uh, random visual novel I got here. Actually, the developer is really nice. They actually messaged me directly on one occasion. Or at least commented me directly. Anyway, I stayed up way too late last night, so it takes some... Some will not to grab it and hurl it out the window. My alarm clock. Back on track here. I begin to make my way down the hall towards the kitchen. I suppose if I wanted, I could just go back to sleep. I don't have anywhere to be. I don't work at the moment, and I don't attend school. I mean, I did, once. But after an incident involving shadow people resulted in some weird rumors, I decided to drop out. Oh. Oh. I suppose one could assume that my life would be boring given I don't attend classes, work, or really leave the house much. I would say, yes, life is pretty boring, but not for the reasons a person would naturally think. The, those shadow people are firm from a one-off occurrence in my life, but they're pretty mild compared to other things I've seen. Wait, shadow people? Is my character, like, insane? Uh, strange creatures that shouldn't exist. Odd occurrences that shouldn't be possible, sometimes resulting in deaths. What? Unusual visions and unnatural sounds. I used to think they were hallucinations, but none of the pills worked. So instead, I just kind of accepted it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> just accept that the world is insane for you, apparently. <laughs> I can't remember how long ago that was, since I don't celebrate my birthday and I easily lose track of time. That's kind of sad. But honestly, I've grown a bit bored by it. I'm in the kitchen now. I'm pretty sure there are ghosts haunting my house, so to be polite, I bid them a good morning before I go pour myself breakfast. Wait, you pour... I mean, yeah, I guess you pour cereal into a bowl. I was like, wait a minute, how do you pour breakfast? <laughs> Easily. It's called yeah. vodka. Well, that too. But... <laughs> it, it took me a second to remember cereal is something you pour out. Oh, yeah, a gorgeous. Well, that's his, like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh. With pure ethanol involved. <laughs> Good old Igorski. The most ugliest, cute animal in existence. <clears throat> anyway, let's see. My response comes in the form of a chair tipping over. Ah, grumpy today, I see. It's fine. I won't bother you too much. I'll be in the library for the most part. 
So apparently the ghost is pissed off already. And I'm just okay with that. The library is in the basement is by far my favorite place in the house, despite it being just as odd as anywhere else here. Rows and rows of bookshelves. I swear the library changes size and content every day. Magical shifting library? That's kind of cool. I haven't bought a single one, personally. They come with the house. Or they came with the house. New books appear at random. Old ones vanish. Yo, that's my kind of library. I'd ask why, but I gave up on answers long ago. Besides, I like reading the contents of these books. Sometimes they teach me things. About sex. I mean, nature. But usually they're just as elect... Ele uh, uh, words. Uh, L... Wait, what is that? As L... X... Is this supposed to be eccentric? Eclentic. I think that's eclentic. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, and genre as any library. Good luck identifying that word, because I don't freaking know. Anyway, sometimes I even find things from other cultures. Ooh. Books, encyclopedias, audiobooks, comics, manga, manhwa. What the frick is manhwa? I even found a... Manhwa. Manhwa? Korean manga. Oh! Well, I'm glad you knew that, because I was just sitting here like, what the hell is manhwa? Manhwa. Alright. They even found a DVD in there once. Cool. That said, the DVD was a copy of The Ring. Oh, that's a good DVD to have in a house full of ghosts. I didn't chance watching it. <laughs> I didn't chance watching it. It felt like a trap. <laughs> The ghosts were like, yeah, watch that movie and die. We're waiting for you. <laughs> it was gone the next day. There's one shelf that never really changes, though. The complete works of H.P. Lovecraft is there, always. I check it every time I'm there, and it's never out of place. I've read every book on that shelf. It's weird. I wonder why such an unpleasant racist man wrote so much about ex existential horror. Wait, what? Was... What? Was the H.P. Lovecraft guy, like, super racist and yeah, stuff? He, he was racist, yeah. Huh. Fun he facts. He black people and all that. Well, damn. I guess we got some fun facts there, happening here. So much so that the political people are trying to take up the racism out of the <clears throat> Call of Cthulhu games. Huh. Interesting. The more you learn, huh? But I relate to the weirdness some of these characters have experienced. I'd argue that perhaps I'm still sane, but truthfully, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I just see random ghosts in my house that trip over chairs, like, and I'm just, you know, I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally not insane. After all, I did just say good morning to the poltergeist in my kitchen. Okay, so he at least called himself out on it. Some could reasonably argue my sanity in court. At any rate, I ate my breakfast without incident. I don't bother picking up the chair that tipped. Ghosty will pick it up later when they're feeling better. Oh, that's nice. I put my dishes in the sink when I'm done. A shadow casts over the sink and the bowl disappears. It's probably in the dishwasher. Wait, what? Shadow person, probably. I I again, we're just okay with the shadow people in the house? I, I would be calling some exorcists real quick. <laughs> the one in the house is kind of a neat freak. From what I've gathered. We take turns cleaning the dishes. It's my turn today, but I guess I didn't feel like waiting. <laughs> Thank you. I'll make it up to you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I hear no response, but I rarely do. I begin to head to the basement. Yeah, let me see this library of magical powers. As I'm leaving the kitchen, I hear the dishwasher turn on. Oh, okay, there it goes. Even a visual novel can get laggy, I guess. The basement is dark and musty, but it's familiar. It smells like old wooden books. As usual, I begin to look through the shelves to find the unfamiliar. I skim through a few titles, but they all seem like they were here last time. I recognize them. I eventually find what looks like some newly published book. Those aren't particularly common here. It looks crisp and new. I pick it up to read. I go to kick back in a chair. I think I'm the only brave one brave enough to come down here, as aside from the library itself, nothing seems to reside here. 
The book isn't particularly original, but it's enjoyable. Uh, teen lit is, isn't really my genre, but it's simpler than adult literature. Some days I prefer that. It's almost magical to me how emotional characters get over simple things like love or Hollywood-style satanic curses. That's quite the interesting uh, thing. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, music, come down just a little bit, music. There you go. Alright. You know, it depends on the genre. Mm-hmm. Eventually I move to put it down when something unusual catches my attention. The Lovecraft bookshelf. Something seems off. Oh, no. He wrote an actual racist book this time. <laughs> Leaving the book I'd been reading on the table in front of the chair, I pull myself to my feet. Oh, look at this book. This thing screams something. The Adventures of Rico. Um, I don't even know what that is. Wait, wait. Abyss, Abyssica? I'm trying to read the titles. Like The only one that's readable here is The Adventures of Rico. And I'm guessing this tentacle one is the Cthulhu book. Seeing as there's tentacles. That purple book. I've never seen it before. Moving closer, I note that there's no writing in the spine. Or on the spine. At least no English writing. What is this? I reach out to take it. Almost immediately I pull my hand away. It feels like it's almost shaking with uncontrollable energy. My touch only seems to inspire it, and it begins rattling... Uh, I should have slowed down there. It's going crazy. Well, I'm either stupid or brave, but hey, I've seen enough weirdness. I pull the book off the shelf. It immediately bounces aggressively out of my hands and lands on the ground, opening up halfway. It flips a few pages and then... What in the world? Oh, the book got a tentacle. The first thing that pops out of the book, I think that's a really long purple strand of someone's hair. Following that, though, is a pale, small hand and arm. I wish it would show that. For a moment, the entity, whatever it might be, seems to be struggling to pull itself out of the book. What should I do? And more importantly, what am I willing to deal with today? Let's see, do I help it out of the book, watch and see what happens, or pick it up and close it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's got boobs. It might have boobs. <laughs> so, do I want to help it out then? Depends. Can you grab it by the boots first? No, it's hands and hair. Okay. Well, I mean that's a start. It could lead to more. Well, I guess it's a bit of a gamble. So, you know, how much of a gambling bird are you? Let's do this. <laughs> Without thinking twice, I gently put a foot on the edge of the book and stabilize it. Then I grab the hand in mine and gently attempt to assist pulling the being out of the pages. It seems almost surprised at being touched, but then the finger curls around mine. Oh, you're going to get a lot more surprises then. I'll tell you what. <laughs> With the book stabilized, the figure pulls itself up and out of the book. For all of the oddities that I've seen in my lifetime, she's still, ki she's still kind of a wonder. So this is definitely a female. Oh. She's like, oh, she's a lolly. It's Stuart. Oh. She's small, looking a bit like a child. <laughs> Can I oh, no. can I get a full view? I think this will do it. Okay, here we go. We got a full view of this character. So I'm sure the game will describe her, but I'm going to go ahead and describe her. So she's got like a little purple swirly bit on the top of her hair. Kind of like how my VTuber has, like, but more, more of it. Then like some almost wolfy looking tufts of hair on the side. And then like long, like rough looking hair. She's wearing a white, it kind of looks like a schoolgirl outfit with a white shirt and purple skirt and a purple tie. She's got like little purple and black socks, a black scarf, an eye patch, Megumin, and then little uh, a purple, a chunky purple tail. And the one eye that isn't covered is purple. Lots of purple. She's small, looking a bit like a child. Her hair, wild as it is, is a vibrant purple and seems to grow out of her scalp that way. She has a patch over one eye, but the moment we lock eyes, I see shock in hers. Once she's free from the book, I set her down on the ground. She seems almost dumbfounded. We have a bit of a staring contest for a while before she cracks a devilish grin at me. 
Oh, she got teeth. And her name is Nyala. N Y A L A. Nyala. Isn't that Nala? Well, there's a Y there, so I'm guessing Niala or Nyala. Oh. I could be wrong. Um, hey, developer, if you see this, you want to help me pronounce these names so I don't look completely stupid? Oh, someone went elsewhere. One me, Jay. Oh, yeah, it looks like Jay's out. That's me, rest in peace. Aw. Alright, well, this is Nyala. Perfect. You're absolutely perfect. Uh, perfect for what, though? A what? <laughs> Um, thank you. The strange declaration is followed by her grabbing both my hands, looking up at me with a wild eye. I'm suddenly getting a really weird dark vibe from this girl. Who or what is she? Welcome back. Welcome to this purple-haired character. Usually these things are obvious. Not so much with this one. There's what seems to be a tail sticking out from under her skirt, except I think it's a tentacle. Oh, it's a tentacle, not a tail. Oh... A tentacle lolly. This does not sound good. I'm getting more of the fact that this might be Stuart. I, <laughs> I guess that's new. I don't usually encounter tentacles. Permanently. Yeah, we're, I, too bad Stuart isn't here. I'd have him voice it. <laughs> for, <laughs> for obvious reasons, I consider this a good thing. She's giggling, and for a moment, I think she's insane. Yeah, that sounds like Stuart. But something about her expression is too calculated to be insanity. Oh my god. She looks like she's going to murder me in my sleep right now. Then it's settled. We're going to kill my mom. Wait, what? E excuse me? <laughs> that sounds right. That sounds like the right reaction. <laughs> the entire world seems to spark out. It's as if the world was a TV and the channel switched to... Cons uh, consisted entirely of white noise. My mind hazes over. Instead of being loud, it's silent. Purely, absolutely silent. I feel like being here too long might genuinely drive me insane. Fortunately, it doesn't take long before a new world begins to materialize under my feet. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that's a pretty backdrop. Hang on. That's really pretty to look at. But look at all that space. Like, lovely purple space... Uh, clouds. What looks like a Wait, neon galaxy kind of thing. Let me get this straight. He gets rewarded by taking getting taken to another world for helping a weird, lonely tentacle creature out of a book, even though he's just as insane as she is. Yeah, that, that's about sums up where we're at so far. Uh... So let's see. The first thing that gets me is the surreal feeling of standing on what appear to be clouds. It feels like I'm floating, but there's somehow still a sense of gravity keeping me rooted. And yet, the ground still feels like it could give way any second. The next thing I notice is the sky. There's stars twinkling and planets above, all in plain view of where I'm standing. It's beautiful, but it somehow feels unreal. Yeah, I can see where it feels a little unreal, you know. You're just sitting in a magical library with ghosts in your house, and then this purple tentacle lolly... That kind of reminds me of my friend Stuart. Sucks up as... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there's a lot going on that's pretty unreal at the moment. Moving on, though. Even the colors don't line up. The clouds are pastels, vibrant pink and purple, while space itself is a beautiful purple. I wish I could better explain what I'm seeing. I mean, it's surreal. It feels like I'm dreaming. Again, your entire existence feels like a dream at this point. Yet it somehow also feels foreboding. I don't belong here. Nothing from Earth belongs here. I don't know if anything belongs here, but I know there's something residing here. I can feel it. Hey, there she is again. Purple Girl turns to me and grins. Her, <laughs> her name is Purple Girl. Her smile is deceptively innocent looking. Welcome to the dreamscape, you lucky thing, you. Oh my god. The smug little shit. I can already tell she's like hella smug. <laughs> I can only think of one other of your kind who has been here before. Consider yourself most fortunate. I am almost dizzy from how strange this place feels. It's very much out of my element. Yeah, I'd say so. I'm used to weirdness, but I've never been to another realm or world before now. 
How fascinating. Hey, are you listening? Uh, pardon. Where are we? Who are you? The girl seems very displeased by my answer. Oh god, she's angry. <laughs> I told you, this is the dreamscape. It's where elder gods like me live. Wait, elder god? Yeah, wait, hold up. Elder, elder gods? <laughs> I see. You're sure calm about this. It's only fractionally stranger than most of my life up until this point. That's facts. She pouts, but is watching me with curious eyes. Well, I. <laughs> well, in that case, she slams her fist into her open horizontal palm. Insect, you shall call me Nyala. I'm probably getting that wrong, but that's what we're doing. No. <laughs> if you're going to call me Insect, I'm going to call you Brat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. You don't call me Insect, you little shit. It briefly occurs to me that I'm talking back to something that calls herself an Elder God. Either she's crazy or she's right, and given how she pulled herself from the book and warped us into a new world, I'm leaning towards the latter. She pouts at me again. You truly aren't afraid. Not really, no. I mean, I suppose if you try to do things with that tentacle, I might get some fear, but you know. She stares at me for a very long while, and a rather creepy grin splits her face. You're more of a unique leaf bug than a common housefly. My assumptions were correct. That's awesome. Follow me, insect. Lead the way, brat. You little shit. <laughs> Lead the way, bitch. Basically. She doesn't respond to my comment for now. Though I get this impression that she might try and kill me in my sleep. Yeah, that the smile she does makes me think that. All the same, I follow her. We don't stop walking until we reach a building. That's a very normal-looking house in the middle of all this. I'm surprised immediately just by how normal it looks compared to everything else around me. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> it's a small wooden house, maybe with two or three bedrooms. The only thing that really sticks out about it is what I would only loosely call a house plant. Oh yeah, there's like some tentacly spiked house plant with an eye there. What even is that thing? It creeps me out. Aside from the plant, though, nothing looks out of the ordinary. It definitely seems like it's for a person, not for someone like Niala, though she seems excited to be here. We are here. Here, huh? Uh, this your place? Niala looks genuinely offended. Oh god, look at her, she's gonna murder me. <laughs> of course not, why would someone like me live in a dumpy old place like this? Uh, I can't think of a response, so I'm just, just hum softly. <laughs> you, on the other hand, I bet you could live here just fine. Go on in. Uh, right. I don't know why, but this almost feels like a trap somehow. In the same way, in the same vein as that ring DVD. Does something else live in that house? Only one way to find out. I walk ahead of Niala and up the front steps. I test the doorknob. It's not locked. I knock tentatively before opening the door. Even the interior looks really plain. Something about that brings comfort. It's not ugly or run down by any means. In fact, it's really quite nice. Still, it's a sharp contrast to look out the window to see vibrantly colored clouds underneath the building instead of a proper floor. I'd like to see the inside of this house that he's talking about. The building looks well maintained. Almost seems like someone keeps this place tidy. A few seconds later, I feel a foot planned firmly against my butt and I'm pushed further into the building. Okay, there we go. Ooh, I like that music. That's good music. You're so slow. You can go inside and look around. No other person lives here. Niala walks in behind me, and I hear the door click shut. I glare back at Niala, displeased. That was unnecessary. You're unnecessary. You were a mistake. I should have just left that book untouched. Niala's pouting is practically audible. You're so mean, you dumb bug. That sense is no contradictory. It's so contradictory that I don't humor it with a response. I change the topic instead. Does anyone else live in this house? The house has no permanent residence, but it does have a hideous maid that maintains it. Huh. The way she says hideous makes me sound like they don't get along, and she's just taking a shot at the maid. I have no proof of that, though. Man, the maid is either really gross looking or probably the best looking character in this game. Never mind anything else. Why did you bring me here? 
You mentioned your mother. Niala perks up again and grins wickedly at the words. She grabs my hand and drags me to the sofa. Yeah, she's the creator of this universe. I want you to help me kill her. Uh, you want me to help you kill God. Why? <laughs> Not just why would you do that, but why would I want to? Oh, that, okay, now that's kind of cute. <laughs> Imagine the power you'd have. Imagine the chaos that'd bring to the world. It sounds so exciting. Yeah. No. Y yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. <laughs> this girl's a raving lunatic. She seems to notice my skepticism. She looks serious for a moment. When you kill a god, you gain their powers, insect. How Have you ever dreamed of having the power of a god? Not really. She seems surprised, and then brushes... Oh, I like that face. <laughs> and then brushes it off. I'm sure it's only because you can't, can't even comprehend it. The idea will grow on you. I'm sure of it. I'm less sure if not for the teleportation, I'd think you were a crazy person, not a god. You're so mean, moth. I don't deserve this treatment. You dragged me from my house and are now insisting I murder a person. She's not a person. She's a god. Jesus. <laughs> How is that better? You get benefits from killing a god, of course. Duh. She says it like it's the most logical thing in the world. Like that makes up for everything that's wrong here. I take a deep breath, trying to reel in my annoyance. Look, I get that you're uh, trying to accomplish something. I'm really not the right person for it. Niala stares at me for a moment, then just smiles innocently. No, you are. What makes you say that? You really shouldn't question me, stickbug. Aren't humans supposed to have faith in gods? Uh, enter religious comment war down below? Okay, that touches a nerve. <laughs> if you know something I don't, then tell me. Otherwise, you're just another narcissistic egomaniac of a monster like the dozens I've dealt with this month. Oh, oh I, th <laughs> I think I'm about to die. If you really have the power you say you do, send me home. I'm not interested in your plants or your crazy revenge fantasy against your mom. Have someone else m massage your ego. I'm done with you. Holy sh- I just destroyed her. Now I'm about to die. She stares at me in silence for a long while. I really have no idea what she's thinking. Hmm. Well, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh-huh. Something about her tone makes me really nervous. I force myself to hold my ground. I'm not usually one for order, but first order of business. You don't think I'm a god, do you? I shake my head. I've met way too many creatures that who tell me they're gods. Even if you who could teleport. Ag again, what happened to this particular character that... This is all normal shit. Like, well, I want to see these adventures you've met with other possibly godly beings. <laughs> she grins. Make a cool anime. Right? Uh, so if I can convince you of my godhood, would you at least consider my plans? That is a dangerous question, and I am painfully aware that answering either way could get me attacked or worse. My silence only seems to agitate her, though she's still grinning. Oh, that's a rape face right there. Uh, taking that as a yes. That's a bad face to see. She begins to laugh, her expression, voice, and posture taking on a demented tone that fills me with dread. Uh oh. Oh, God. That, that's the face of I'm about to die or about to lose my uh, visual novel virginity here. Well, then, I'm You're just going busy. to have to prove to. Yeah. Oh, this is. Yeah. She's about to do something to me. I'm just going to have to prove it to you. Hold on to your wings, butterfly. Her laugh seems to change. It warps into a sound that makes me feel like there's actual bugs crawling in my ears. Oh. Oh, God. That's like some scary shit happening in the background. I instinctively clap my hands over them as if that'll keep them out. As soon as I try to ignore the sound, though, the color begins to melt out of the building around me, dripping into bloody puddles on the floor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> the air fills with whispered voices. That I can still hear, even as I desperately try to black them out. Oh my god. This is like battle music right here. Niala's voice worms its way into my head. You can't possibly be stupid enough to doubt me now. Could you? If you're still willing to consider, though, well... Holy shit, what the... F what the freak is this? <laughs> as if on cue, the roof slowly begins to rip off the building. Maggots seeming to sprout where the roof was once attached. Ew. 
A hand hovers over the entire house. The hand is purple with rot, wrinkled with age, and smells of decay. Badly enough that I almost vomit. Holy moly. That's pretty cool looking, though, not gonna lie. The flesh also is covered in eyeballs of varying sizes. That sounds fine. Maybe I'll just have to squish you. You wouldn't be useful for anything else. The hand begins to raise up, fingers curling down and clawing loosely at the edges, edges of the house between the maggots. It wants to claw me to shreds. That's not something I see. It's just a sense I get in, the, in that instant. Visions of blood and carnage fill my head. How long has it been since I felt genuinely afraid? I don't know. I am now, and I hate it. I've been alive for longer than your Earth has even existed, existed tick. My voice trembles as I speak. I, I get it. I believe you. Good. You aren't as stupid as you initially presented yourself to be. There's sarcastic remark dancing at the top of my, tip of my tongue, but I don't dare speak it. My head is starting to ache from the scent. My stomach rolls on itself violently. Now, now, you'll do as I say, won't you? Her tone holds the same condescending tone a human would speak to a cat with. My voice raises in a half yell as I answer, unable to control the volume. I'll consider it, I promise. Ooh, that's cheeky. Considering isn't good enough. Such a shame. The hand rips into half of the wall and a shriek splits the sky as it begins to lower down to crush me. I close my eyes and curl into a ball, wonder wondering how bad it'll hurt. Ugh. So, yeah, that, that was like a bad idea to try and challenge the little purple thing. The strike never comes. When my eyes open, the room is returned to normal. Nyala is sitting where she was with the most frustratingly smug grin on her face. You know what? On second thought, considering it probably is good enough. For now. It's a step in the right direction. That's... That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad we can uh, come to this understanding. <laughs> I remain seated for a solid ten seconds before I move to my feet slowly and walk out of the room. I hear Niala giggling almost maniacally as I find the master bedroom and I close the door behind me. Uh, apparently I don't have any more time to deal with her. Her giggling doesn't count, doesn't cause that insect crawling sensation, but it's definitely unpleasant for other reasons now. I hear her knock on my door and chirp, insect, in a sing-song voice. I respond by grabbing the nearest item, a lamp, and hurling it out the door. Oh, it just, I don't like that. I mean, it's a visual novel, but, you know. The sound of a shattering against the door seems to force Niala to get a clue. I'm not okay right now. That's, there's a beat of silence. Oh, well, I'll talk to you later. I'm glad she's, like, understanding this. <laughs> I don't think she understands why I'm upset, but she shuffles away anyway. I quietly sit on the side of the bed and I move to lay down. The feelings of fear and the things I just saw are still behind my eyes. The stench especially lingers. My stomach queasy. Ugh. I don't think I'd like to be where that hand was. Especially if it asked me to smell its fingers. I think this is the closest <laughs> I've ever come to experiencing and accepting my own death. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. I don't think I'd be able to sleep after that either. I don't really sleep, not in the standard sense. I'm not rested. I'm still feeling unwell. But somehow it has become 1 a.m. I guess I slipped out of consciousness. No, that 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 it, not that it's easy to tell. I sit up slowly, my eyes burn, and I don't feel great, but there's a noticeable change in the room. The lamp, which I was pretty sure was in pieces, is now intact again on the nightstand. The door is closed. No one seems to have entered. Did Niala repair it? Or perhaps it was that maid Niala mentioned. I don't think I'm going to properly sleep, so even though I'm tired, I stand and move to head to the living room. Hmm. I'm surprised when I hear a bit of whistling sound from the kitchen area next to the living room. A tea kettle? I hesitate, afraid of what I might see, but as I peek around the corner anyway, after taking a deep breath... Oh. Hello, random new character. Hey, Jay, if you're still there, this character has your color scheme. Some good old black and yellow stuff going on here. Let's see, there's another girl in the kitchen. I see that. Yeah. Uh, wearing a yellow jacket and pouring herself some tea. Her black hair seems to shine a little in the dim light. Her eyes do something similar. Ooh. That's like the good face to see. She's very pretty, but she also gives off a serious vibe. She turns to face me. 
This one, wow, we go from a name like Niala to Heather. <laughs> That's quite a dramatic change in, like, name styling. Here, let me get a, like, look at this one. I'm sure she'll, like, describe more, but... So she got, like, a yellow cloak that has, like, kind of a wizard hat top to it. Gray shirt, black sleeves, gold dress. Oh, wait, her color scheme kind of reminds me of that gold uh, pillar from the beginning. That's what I'm getting out of this. Alright, let's see what she has to say. Good morning, Master. I have long awaited the day we would meet. Wait, I'm Master now? Oh. She places the tea in front of me, gently pushing it into my hands. And I'm a little dumbfounded, but I do take it from her. It's a perfect temperature and does not burn my hands. It smells like liquid rice. Green tea. That's in the back of my mind as I quietly echo. Master? The girl nods and bows quietly in front of me. It's not just that it's different from how Niala behaves, it's that it's different from how I've ever been treated in my entire life. I hesitate before I speak. Uh, Niala mentioned a maid. Would that be you? I can practically see the irritated vein popping from her forehead. Still, she maintains her composure. I'm afraid you have been misinformed. Heaven forbid Niala is lie about something. Why would she ever do that? <laughs> My sarcasm seems to earn me points with her, as the faintest of smiles appears on her face. That would be her nature, yes. I live in this house, and I have been seeking my master for as long as I can remember. I'm pleased to have finally found you. I suppose I owe thanks to that brat for one thing, if nothing else. That seems like it had some kind of... Wait, no. Yeah, no, okay, I was saying that right. That seems like it has to be some kind of mistake. I'm not really a master of anything, except possibly drawing weird situations to me. Hmm. I'm the master of cannibal cannibalism. I'm the greater <laughs> master here. Anyway, I suppose, though, this also counts. Are you a god, too? Of sorts. You may call me Heather. Again, such a normal human name for a god. <laughs> I see. I'm Random Robin. What up, girl? She nods, and after a moment... Of silence says, I will not demand that you drink the tea, but it will get cold soon. Oh, right. It's kind of odd, though, to have someone show up, call you master, and then offer you tea. I half wonder if she drinks, if the drink is poisoned. Heather seems to read my mind. This all must be very strange to you. I am happy to drink first to prove I have not spiked it with anything. I hesitate, but I eventually nod. If that's alright. I haven't really had anything bad since or had anything since breakfast, so I'm thirsty. But the situation is very odd, even by my standards. I wouldn't trust that tea. Oh, no, she's going to drink I it first. I not drink tea died. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Hard. She's uh, drinking it first, though. She's going to take a hit for me if, if it's bad. Heather doesn't seem offended, gently taking the drink from my hand and sipping it before handing it back to me. I wait a moment before nodding and taking a drink myself. It tastes just like you'd expect, like green tea. Nothing particularly remarkable about it, other than I like it and it's good. That's a pretty good way to describe something. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Perhaps we should take a seat. I'll answer any question you have to the best of my abilities. That would be very helpful. Yeah, how about some good questions? That didn't go so well the first time, but Heather doesn't seem like she's going to pull any stunts like that. Heaven forbid, at least, provided there is a heaven. Hmm... The two of us moved to take a seat in the living room. Once we're situated, Heather turns to look at me. What would you like to ask me, Master? Uh, we have... Wow, we have, like, at least four options here. Well, let's start with where am I? What and where is this place exactly? I suppose that's a fair question. After all, this is your first exposure to it, no? This place has been home to Elder Gods since this universe was created. Anything above a certain level of power exists within this plane. There's another plane that also exists on Earth, which for simplicity's sake I'll call the Lighthouse. Lesser gods, and what you might call odd creatures, live there instead. Perhaps sometimes I'll show you that location. I see. But, why is this house here, then, if only elder gods live here? A human male came up here once, so this place was made as a residence for him. I believe he's... Oh, oh my god, did HP Lovecraft come to this world of elder gods and just write the shit down that he saw? I believe he's known as a writer to humans. I hesitate at the description. 
creator, creative, clever, good with words, also a complete jerk. I've heard all these descriptors used for this person. H.P. Lovecraft, by any chance? I do believe that is his name. He wrote a lot about insanity and gods and deformed crazy creatures. How interesting. <laughs> I can't tell if she's being sarcastic. I suppose that's one way to introduce our existence to other humans, though I doubt they believe it. It's considered horror fiction. So he wrote about all this stuff and experienced it, and everyone just thought it was a horror fiction novel. That's hilarious. She just nods quietly, appearing contemplative. So, other elder gods, huh? Do others live in the house aside from you? Heather makes a face. Typically, no, but Niala does sometimes show up. I consider those days to be unpleasant. She's not here right now. She went to bother someone else, I suppose. Either way, if you choose to stay here now, you will be very welcome company. Oh, oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll make you feel welcome, too. <laughs> if you wish to go home, however, I request that I be allowed to accompany you, Master. I've spent a long time waiting and searching for you. I am glad we have finally been through, been brought together. Um, well, let me... Let me find out what she's about. Who are you exactly? I would like it if you called me Heather. Well, I figured that much. I am not the strongest of gods, but I take care of this house. I have long awaited my master's arrival. I travel between here and the location on Earth known as the Lighthouse. Is Heather not your real name? No. However, I do not typically share my real name with anyone. Okay, so she probably has some kind of, like, godly name. Maybe I will tell you someday in the future. Uh, does she call everyone master? Is she a master slut? Apologies if this is a rude question, but do you call everyone master? Absolutely not. I would only call you that, as you are my master. Please do not mistake me for some kind of public servant or maid. I didn't mean it like that. I just failed to see how I'm your master. You encountered unusual things that no human would e have ever encountered, no? I spray as how she know that, but I nod slowly. <sighs> Pardon me, folks. <sighs> A little tired. Let's see. You're very different from, compared to the others on Earth. You are my master. Someday I think you will understand. I'll have to take her word for it. And so what's up with her and Niala? So about you and Niala. Heather just sighs and puts her head in her hands. What about her? What is that all about? <laughs> she takes a heavy and deep breath as she lifts her head. I find her unpleasant. Niala is very much into chaos, disorder, and insanity. I prefer things to be in order. I have a duty to serve and guard my master to death if I must. Our philosophies in that regard are, well, very incompatible. We don't get along. If you ordered me to kill her, I dare say I'd be delighted to obey. <laughs> She's like, please tell me to kill her. <laughs> I beg you. Well, that's interesting. I don't think I could order a murder, though. Wouldn't sit well on my conscience. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I guess that's all the questions. I don't really have a lot of questions. I suppose there's one small inquiry, though. Yala mentioned something about uh, killing her mom. Heather's eyes narrow slightly in thought. Arya. Nyala's mom. Arya is rather infamous amongst the gods. She sleeps at the center of the universe. Many gods have sacrificed their, their lives to keep her asleep. Were, to, were she to wake up, this whole universe could be destroyed or even simply blink out of existence. Damn. I can see why maybe killing her might be a good idea right now. Whoa, that's a lot of power for any one person to, or thing to have. Jeez. <laughs> Apparently this person's so powerful. She... Like, for real, though. <laughs> Just blink everything out of existence by waking up. Is that why Niala wants me to kill her? No. Niala just likes the idea of chaos. She's a demon child. <laughs> yeah, I figured that one out. I see. I, however, also think you should kill Arya. What? You too? Why? If you were to kill Arya, you would gain her powers. I have reason to believe that this would be able to greatly stabilize the universe. Plus, there is evidence to believe that Arya could wake up soon. If you were to kill her, well, the universe might be spared. There's a chance that the predictions are wrong, of course, but this isn't something it's wise to gamble with. I'd no nod slightly, my throat a little dry. So that's how it is. I will not force you to kill her, however. As much as I would like it, 
if you would, I realize that such a task is not only difficult, but it might be considered immoral by many. I give another nod, a quick one this time. You know, just a slightly quicker nod. I need to think about it. There's no hurry. If it were to happen, it might not ever occur, even occur within your lifetime. Well, that's good. Might not? That's comforting. <laughs> I finished my tea. Thanks for explaining, at least. Nyala wasn't very clear with her answers. Unsurprising. Nyala will likely return later in the morning. I do believe, however, that you should get some sleep before then. Your sleep did not seem particularly restful night earlier. You were rolling around and whimpering. I was? That's a little embarrassing. Oh, well, Niala showed me some kind of scary stuff when I questioned her godhood. I still can't get those sights out of my mind. Heather frowns. Sorry you went through that. I can ensure that Niala will not disturb your sleep. I will guard you. Well, that's awesome. Part of me isn't sure I want someone watching me sleep. Part of me knows that Niala would probably mess with my dreams if Heather didn't stop her. A necessary evil, I suppose. That'd be great, thanks. I live to serve, Master. I nod and stand back up, moving towards the sink to put the cup away. Heather catches up with me. I will clean this for you. Head on to sleep. You've had an eventful day. She's not wrong. Thank you. With a small bow of her head and slight curtsy, she heads back off into the kitchen to wash the teacup she'd given me. I linger for a few moments, but eventually I return to the master bedroom. Alright. Oh, wait, something's happening. Yeah, you'll never stop me. Die, you insufferable pest! <laughs> Holy shit! The room is destroyed. It's a lot of yelling and breaking, and a breaking lamp that I woke up to. I didn't think the lamp could shatter twice. <laughs> Yet here we are. Ooh, listen to that beat, though. Yeah. I'm just gonna rock out to it real quick. Don't mind me. <laughs> I stir weakly and take a moment to recall where I am. Yesterday was the first day in years that I could genuinely call surprising. However, when I see Niala bouncing from wall to wall and Heather wielding a massive scythe in an attempt to cut her down, I wouldn't say I'm exactly surprised. Annoyed, yes, but not surprised. Must you be so loud? <laughs> my words cause them both to pause and look my way. The room is a mess. There are scythe marks carved deep into the wall, and as stated, the lamp is once again broke on the floor. There's a toppled over dresser, too, in the other corner of the room. Heather immediately puts her scythe away. I apologize, Master. I was trying to keep Nyala from waking you up. I muted all the sound in the room. You failed, though. <laughs> Some guard you are can't even stop me from... Oof! Nyala's words cut off as Heather plants her boot right into and then on top of Nyala's face. <laughs> So Niala can avoid multiple swings from a massive scythe, and yet she can't avoid the wrath of Heather's heel. Hmm, that's worth noting. <laughs> that's funny. Master, please grant me person to kill Niala. I'm a few steps away from begging you. <laughs> I knew it. She's like, please let me kill her. <laughs> She's also one <laughs> literal step away from caving in Niala's face. Now, not now, Heather. I really am not fond of violence. However, I get the impression Niala will take advantage of it if I don't make a different excuse. It'd be too hard to get her god blood out of the carpet. It's not worth that effort. Just let it be for now. <laughs> Heather seems a little... <laughs> Heather seems a little disappointed, but she obediently removes her boot from Niala's face. She opens her mouth to say something, but I quickly interrupt. If you try and cause more problems, I won't stop her next time. Huh, <laughs> Killjoy. I don't see what Heather sees in you. I get the impression that you and Heather rarely see the same thing, so so to speak. Heather hums in agreement. <laughs> Still, you saw something too, didn't you? You did bring me here, after all. Nyala cracks a devilish grin. I suppose you're right. I feel like Nyala, as an ent entity, is the world's most fascinating house fire. <laughs> Once you just one you just can't look away from. It's an utter catastrophe. Horrifying. Everything's burning, and there's at least three children in it. What the hell? And yet you keep watching, probably because it'll kill you too if you take your eyes off it for even a second. That's an interesting way to describe a, a living creature. Just saying. <laughs> I might have lost the control of the metaphor there. <laughs> I like the description of a of a living thing. It's a <laughs> it's a house fire so crazy that it's got children burning inside it, and it'll murder you if you look away. <laughs> oh crap. 
Let's see. So is there food in here for breakfast? Heather steps up immediately. I brought some food to the house while you were asleep. While on your clock, it's a little bit past breakfast time, I would be happy to make you pancakes. Yala begins to bounce eagerly up and down. Ooh, let me... Hit. Absolutely not. <laughs> Nyala wanted to help make pa pancakes. <laughs> Before Nyala can pour, pout a co or complain, I attempt an alternative. Nyala, hmm? You seem the sort to enjoy games. She pulls off a kind of faked coy expression. Maybe. How about while Heather makes breakfast, you go obtain some games for us to play? Card games, board games, video games, doesn't matter. That's right, real gamers play any kind of game. I'd offer you cash, but you can probably create things like that from thin air. Go down to the games to a game store, see what tickles your fancy, and make a copy up here. How does that sound? Nyala is staring, staring at me with wide eyes. For a moment, she almost seems touched. It's quickly gone, replaced with a self-satisfied smirk. What, you think an insect like you can beat me at games? Won't know till we try. Besides, it'd kill me, no? You're on, termite. And with that, she's gone. <laughs> Yeah, that's how, you, that's how you get children to behave. You throw a game in their face and say, have fun. <laughs> Heather looks mildly impressed. Not bad, Master. Thanks. Figured it might be worth a shot. I ponder a moment before asking. D do you and Yala eat? We can, but we have no need to. Why ask? Well, it'd be, it'd be no fun for me to eat alone. I was hoping maybe you two could join me at the table. The spirits that haunted my house on Earth did that from time to time, so... Heather doesn't question the spirits thing. I'm sure as a god she knows all about that kind of phenomena. Are you sure? Well, only if it's not extra work for you to make extra pancakes. You don't have to worry about that. I'm but a servant. It never It's never any trouble for me to. if it's for you. That's cool. Let's see. That's still going to take some getting used to. Well, if you don't mind, then make some extra pancakes for yourself and Yala. We both know she'll complain if we leave her out. Heather, Heather noticeably bites back a sigh before nodding. Yes, Master. Do you know what you're going to do? Uh, I'll work that out in a moment. Go ahead on ahead of me. <laughs> Heather gives a bow before departing for the kitchen. She gives a small pause at the doorway, though. She looks back at me, seeing almost sheepish, uh, before giving a small wave of the hand. Hmm. Oh. Just like that, the room is back to normal. What a wizard. No scratches, no toppled furniture, intact lamp, the works. <laughs> Gotta have the lamp. After that, Heather leaves the room. It's still surreal to watch reality get warped in such a way. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Then again, I've seen many things just as weird and gotten used to them before, so perhaps I'm wrong. I mean, I did just suddenly get all friendly with the two gods, apparently. I lay down in bed for a bit longer, but eventually I begin to feel a bit like a lump. I just had two others, both gods no less, go off to do other tasks for my benefit, and here I am staring at the ceiling. I should maybe go and help one of them. Which one should I spend time with, though? Hmm. Another which one choice. can you? Well, which one? Which one are you more interested in? I guess that's mm, a better way to. Let's see. Do I go help mancake? Mancakes. <laughs> <laughs> do I go help mancakes? Do I go help make pancakes with Heather, or do I go pick out some games with Nyala? I mean, can't go wrong with pancakes, but then there's also games. Damn, that's a tough choice. How can we choose between breakfast and video games? Hmm. I don't know, Mira, Jay, any thoughts? How can you not pick pancakes? What? Pancakes is best. True. Pancakes are pretty good. I guess I can go make some pancakes. Yeah, I'll go make some pancakes. Whoop. Wait, hang on. Mother heckin' pancakes. Mother heckin' pancakes. Oh, I was checking the mute zone real quick. Make sure Jay didn't type something. Alright, here we go. Alright, we're making pancakes. The Alice scares me. I think Heather is a safe bet. Besides, even if she calls me master, I don't want to take advantage of her helpfulness. Standing up, I head to the kitchen. Heather's already getting started, having organized everything on the counter. Measuring cups, pans, ingredients. It's quite organized. Hey, Heather. She glances up and offers a small bow of her head. Shouldn't you try and get more rest? Nah, I'd feel like a piece of furniture if I didn't try and do something, you know? Yeah, a piece of furniture. That's the, that's the saying. Mind if I assist? She pauses at the request. 
I know a few recipes. I won't set the house on fire. And if I make any mistakes, I'm sure it's an easy fix for you. It is alright if you want to help. I was just surprised. Maybe I shouldn't be. She muses silently for a moment. You alright? Of course, Master. Come here, allow me to teach you. She sounds even happier. I don't know why, but it makes me feel good too. So from what... Oh yeah, just as a reminder, from what I understand, this is like a two-hour experience. So we still got, we're like halfway through, technically. Uh, well, then again, I've paused a couple times, so like... Uh, you know, it's probably probably a little longer than an hour left. I move to the kitchen, and Heather begins to go step by step over the recipe. I copy as best I can. After a few moments, she steps behind me and wraps her arms around my body. Oh, oh! We're about to be doing some uh, fun cooking. She lightly guides my hands and shows me technique. I guess pancakes was the good choice. It's not long before we begin making other fruits, too, besides just pancakes. We cut up some fruits and vegetables. Heather shows me proper technique when using a knife. We make some scrambled eggs and omelets, too. Ooh. Damn, that's actually a pretty good sound in breakfast. I'm not one for cooking anything fancy, usually, but I find myself having a lot of fun. As we work, Heather is mostly instructive, but as we wait for the pancakes to cool a little... Master, I hope you don't mind if I ask. Ask away. She gives off a stuff chuckle, sounding almost nervous. You you don't mind when I talk to you? Huh? Why would I mind? Does Nyala give you crap for speaking or something? If it were only Nyala, I wouldn't have asked. She seems hesitant. Someone important to me used to criticize me whenever I spoke. You really don't mind? Well, to give you a proper analysis, you're helpful, your voice is pretty, and even if I didn't think that, you could talk whenever you felt like it. Heather looks startled, but then smiles warmly. Thank you. I'm so glad. Oh, we're making Heather happy. Her smile makes me feel warm inside. There's still three other choices at some point, though. Niala returns in due time, and at that time, we've set the table and finished preparing all the food. Niala seems taken aback, but she seems almost excited as well. With everyone home, we all sit down to eat breakfast. Pancakes! Pancakes! Whee! <laughs> so this one really is a child. <laughs> Yala seems shocked, though, as she sees just how much food is on the table. I'm flattered, Heather. You made so much food for me. Don't be foolish. You know it's not for you. Master joined me when we made food together. Yeah, I had a good time. I did, too. Get a room, you two. I give her a look before taking a seat. Yala hops onto a chair and begins to drag the entire plate of pancakes towards herself. Oh, look at that. Hang on. <laughs> That's cute. That's a cute little image right there. Heather's about to murder her for those pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cute little picture. Yeah, that's that's amazing. <laughs> Heather pulls out her scythe, and in under a second, it's against the owl's throat. She gives an uneasy laugh, pushes the plate back, and takes two for herself. <laughs> She's like, uh, my bad. <laughs> Only once I'm seated, and I've got myself some pancakes. Two, does she put the scythe away? Man, you gotta fight for them pancakes. <laughs> Look like it would have been a good uh, screenshot. <laughs> Save it as like your P your PC background. I'm tempted. <laughs> Honestly, I'm tempted. This this game does have like a gallery mode, so I can like go and look at pictures like that. Uh, Heather takes a seat beside me, further away from Niala. With that, we begin to eat. It's a relief in a way. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast the day before. That said, it's also normal. More normal than I'm used to. No spirits, ghosts, shadow people, random vampire break-in. Wait, random vampire break-in? What the hell has been happening to this guy before right now? Oh, this guy gives off Saitama level energy. Yeah, he just doesn't give a shit anymore. He's like so desensitized. Oh, there's just elder gods eating breakfast, Matthew. Whatever. Then again, I guess my breakfast companions are both gods. Okay, that that kind of makes up for the normalcy. Oh, okay, just kind of. You you almost destroyed your inside because one of them had a giant smelly hand coming after you. These pancakes are amazing, amazing, Heather. Thank you. Oh, they're all right, I guess. Heather's lips twitch slightly, maybe in amusement. I'm sure that's the closest Niall has ever gotten to a compliment for Heather. Once I'm done, I place my fork down. 
So about my reason for being here. That immediately grabs both of their attention. Yala speaks first. Right, we're going to take out my mom. Uh, yeah, how do I even go about that exactly? There are a few things we would need to get you prepared. You don't need to think about that right now. If I may make a suggestion, you can consider it more once we visited the lighthouse. The lighthouse, huh? Heather mentioned that place this morning. The lighthouse is where gods of lesser strength reside. Some of the more powerful gods are completely incapable of traversing Earth at all. Sometimes they'll communicate with gods on Earth if they really need something, though that's rare. Aw, yeah! Carrie is so fun to play with. I'm sure Sherry would be just as fun for you, don't you think? Niala gasps dramatically and folds her arms. How dare you! So I have no idea who either of these people are. I decide to interrupt. Where, when, I, when am I going to see the lighthouse, though? Well, Master, I was planning on visiting tomorrow on a personal errand. However, if you think you need more time, I do not require you to attend with me. No! <laughs> Niala slams her hands down on the table, almost knocking her plate off the table in the process. She pouts like a child. I want the bug to kill my mom soon! <laughs> Random Robin is coming with us tomorrow. That's not your choice, Niala. It's all right. I'll go. Now shut up and eat your pancakes, Niala. <laughs> <laughs> Just treating her like a child. <laughs> her look is a mix of pleased and annoyed at my words. Still, she does obey. Are you sure, Master? I do not wish to trouble you, even if Niala does. I smile worriedly. Eh, I want to see the place. I've seen a lot of weird things, but I've never seen been to this lighthouse place. Why do I feel like the lighthouse is my home? That's why all the spirits and shadow people are there. I think it'd be kind of exciting. You po your positive outlook is inspiring, Master. Alright, we'll go together. I nod and move to finish my food as well. We finish our breakfast, then Heather and I put all the dishes away. I try to convince Niala to help, but by the time I even think to ask, she's gone off somewhere else. Go figure. Yeah, th you'd think the child wants to help with chores. Who should I spend time with? Okay, so I can either stick with Heather or hang out with Niala. Should I stick with Heather or should I go to Niala? Hmm. Any thoughts? Heather, she makes pancakes. She did make. She did make pancakes. She's also nice to you. True. Also pancakes. <laughs> also pancakes. <laughs> All right, we doing. We going to Heather then. We don't need to spend time with the child. I'm just I decided to check out what Heather is doing. I track her down to the outside of the lighthouse, or outside of the house, and through a back door. Ooh. Yeah, like, all of these are, like, nice little settings. Uh, where's the thing? Oh, yeah, there it is. She seems to have created a little bubble of the of backyard, invisible from the front entrance, since I checked there and hadn't seen it before. Heather's crouched down off to one side, tending to what appears to be a garden. To my surprise, she seems to have planted seeds and is watering them normally. Hey, Heather. She greets me with a hum, placing the watering can down and standing up, turning to face me. Hang on, is this like a... Yeah, this is like a behind shot of her. That's interesting. Good afternoon, Master. Is there something you need from me? Nah, I was mostly just checking in. Though I'm kind of surprised to see flowers here. They don't grow normally up here, but I've created a pocket in which they can exist. I thought maybe a nice yard might be a place for you to retreat if you need to think. Hmm. She hesitates. I should have asked first. If you don't like it, I can easily scrap the area and make something else. Heather, don't be ridiculous. It's very thoughtful of you. I like it. Thank you for coming up with it. I mean, I was surprised you're growing flowers normally. I would have thought you'd just conjure them up or something. Heather looks both pleased and a little embarrassed. I live to serve, Master. I'm pleased you like it. I could just conjure up some flowers and be done, but... I will admit, perhaps it's for my benefit if it used to be rather tedious taking care of the house. Now you are here, however, I wish to put my all into it. Still, when there is downtime, I enjoy having extra activities to do. It makes time pass a bit faster. True. Time does pass when you're having fun. I see. Yeah, I think I can understand that. I approach her side and examine the mix of soft soil and small green stems lightly poking out of the ground. I'm sure there is a slightly, slight godly influence at play, but I still find myself rather looking forward to seeing what grows. I'm no garden expert. I never grew plants in my house for fear I might accidentally grow a man-eating Venus flytrap or something like that. 
of that ilk. <laughs> Come to think of it, there's a plant that matches my fears right at the house's veranda. Still, doesn't mean there's one. those ones aren't pretty. It, it does seem like a perfect place to relax. Maybe I could ask Heather to make a pool so, even, so I could even swim. If the preference hits me. I know how to swim, but I've always refused to enter lakes or oceans. Not since that mermaid tried to drown me. A freaking mermaid tried to drown you? Dude, how are you okay with all this? What I feel, the hell? I feel anyone else in this situation would be getting like eons worth of therapy going on here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, just a mermaid tried to drown me, so I just stay away from the water. Whatever. It'd be great to have a safe location to swim. A thought occurs to me. Do you swim, Heather? Huh? Oh, not typically, but I would join you if you requested it of me, Master. That sounds fun. Heather picks up the watering can once more and quietly returns to watering the plants, though I can tell she's keeping an eye on me, too. There's a massive tree in the middle of said field, good for climbing and having branches set up for that such a thing. That one was definitely conjured. It's too perfect to not have been. I stare at it for a bit, uh, for a little while, my thoughts drifting. I don't think I've ever been quite this off guard at peace. And to think, it only took getting abducted by an insane elder god of chaos for it to happen. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> hey, go figure, a god of chaos kidnapping me is how I be at peace. <laughs> gotcha. Eventually I begin to walk again and make my way to the other over to the tree. I hear Heather put down the watering can and I slow down so she can join me. Ever make something like this for someone else? No. She hesitates for a moment before adding, Not quite like this. Did you have a previous master? This is also made with hesitation, and she gives a small nod. Yes, however, she was not nearly as kind as you. She would regularly scold me over the smallest things, strike me, push me around, insult me. Damn. What a bitch. I can hardly imagine what kind of entitled monster would treat Heather in such a way. That's awful. I'm sorry. It's quite alright. That is in the past now. I live to serve you now, master. And that's what I plan to do. Sweet. I still don't quite understand, but if she if it brings her peace and gives her a sense of fulfillment, who am I to take that from her? Just know I'm grateful, okay? Even if I'm still a little confused about being called Master. Would you prefer to be called something else? Whatever's most comfortable for you is fine, really. She nods and I reach the edge of the large tree. With a glance back at Heather, I reach up to the first branch and climb up onto it. I glance back and see her removing her yellow cloak. She folds it neatly under the tree before she climbs up after me, watching my feet more than her own. Once we're high enough for my liking, I take a seat on the comfortable branch. Heather tests the branches before joining me, sitting a little further out, of, out to my right. We stay up on the branches until I raise, it seems like the sun's setting. I'm sure it's just a replica and a trick of the light in the bubble Heather has created, and my glance at her confirms it. She's still smiling with an almost hopeful expression. I grin and nod, which seems to make her feel relieved. When it begins to get dark, I decide to head inside. I alert Heather, and together we make our way down the tree and head inside. I thank Heather for the time spent, and I move to my room, preparing to go to bed. So right now we're on the Heather path, I'm guessing. I get maybe a few hours of rest, closing my eyes, sleeping decently, dreamlessly. When I wake, though, it's still early, just a little past 1 a.m. It's like adjusting to a new time zone, in a way. Pawing lightly out my eyes, I move to the bedroom window. There's almost a chilly breeze near it, though I doubt it's truly wind or air. That'd require an atmosphere. Still, it's cold, and it doesn't feel too unpleasant. However, when I lean against the window sill, I see something that catches me off guard. Oh, hello. There's another one. A woman in blue and white stands facing away from the window amongst the clouds. She's beautiful, looking composed and a little serious from where I'm standing. We got another waifu here. I wonder if she's lost. She's facing away from me, but she's not walking anywhere. She has a shackle around one leg and a ball and chain. It's a jarring contrast to the rest of her. Huh. Despite knowing its dangerous part of me is drawn to her, I couldn't possibly explain why. Oh, I can understand which part's drawn to her. <laughs> I stand and move to the front door to, and go see her. She's still there when I get outside. I'm hesitant, but I eventually gather the nerve to call out. Excuse me, are you alright? 
Her back straightens up in surprise, and she turns slightly to look at me. Hello. <laughs> Her smile is warm, something about it almost familiar, but again, an explanation as to why it eludes me. She turns to face me entirely. Something about her very presence seems mystical. Powerful, even. I know I should be nervous. Terrified, even. I'm not. Are you lost? A little bit. But that's okay. I find I have a funny way of being where I need to be. Who are you, little child? I almost argue that I'm not a child, but I suppose by these Elder God standards, even a human is a child. My name is Raina Robin. What about you? A look of surprise crossed her face, then one of delight and amusement. So, here's a quick look at this one, without any of the text box. Lots of blue going on here. I'm kind of down for it. Not gonna lie, design-wise, she's currently my favorite. She reminds That's me of the tiny by her clothing. Of who? Mm. Kaine? Kaide? <laughs> Kaine. Hmm. Near? Oh, yeah. Although not as, uh... Revealing as, as Kaide's. It reminds me of it, though. Yeah, true. Oh, Kaine. Yeah, not Kaide. Yeah, really. Kaine. Yeah, she's definitely got... Dingo, you would like this one. Oh? Yeah. She's the most. She's got the most plot out of all of them so far. <laughs> I don't think I know what you mean by plot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't nice. think that's the right question for me. That's fine, though. You wouldn't happen to have seen a little kitty, have you? A cat? You know, purple, purple fur, stumpy tail, single eye. She, is she talking about Niala? Mangy little thing. <laughs> she just called Niala a mangy cat. <laughs> I would do. Yeah, is is she talking about Niala? Possibly. She's doing all right. She yours? I wonder how dead I'd be if Niala heard me say that. This the woman in blue just giggles. Not quite. I can't talk to her right now though. Reasons, reasons. But I want to make sure she's in good hands. Uh, she's a handful, but yeah, she seems happy enough. That's all that matters. Thank you, Random Robin. The woman moves over to me, pulls me into a hug so tight that I'm not fully certain that damage isn't done to my back. Yo, that's a bear hug I want. When she releases me, I make sure I can still move my legs and that my spine didn't stop snap during that. Really, it's no problem. She giggles. You'll be okay out here, lost or otherwise? This place is home to me. Don't you worry about me, little one. She pinches my cheek lightly. It takes a lot of willpower to not smack her hand away. Not because she's doing anything wrong, mind. Just instinct. If you insist, I'm sure you're an elder god too, but... Do you need a drink or food before you go on your way? Oh, you're so cute. I wish I could take you with me. Ah, uh, but you have business here, don't you? I can't interfere now th with that now, can I? Somehow, despite her air-headed tone of voice, there's knowing there's a knowing twinkle in her eye. Oh, wait, here we go. This is... The, look at that. That's the picture right there. Mm. And it looks like uh, Jay has left us again for now. Yeah. I have a funny feeling that's not Yala's mom. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe the mom. Well, maybe. There's only five girls on the main screen, and this is the third one, so. Yeah. And the other two don't look like they're any more powerful than. Well, this is a demo as well, so we might not even see the ending. It might just introduce the characters. Uh, Jay's continuing to have a medical issue. He will talk to us later. Oh, okay. Tell him I said thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, our friend Jay has been having some medical issues, but hopefully he will be feeling better as soon as possible. Um, I'll send him pictures of any of the others that come up if he doesn't come back. Uh, no, no, I'll be okay, little random Robin. I don't need anything more than what I've already gotten. I'm <laughs> not gonna lie, I'm kind of into this one right now. She ruffles my hair and beams. She even leans down and kisses the top of my head. Aww. She She's acting like a mom. Yo. Hold it. Yeah, but I, I don't think she's like... I don't think she's Niala's mom, because Niala's mom's supposed to be asleep. 
Hmm. That's what they tell you. Women now, you know, lied to you. I mean, this one does look like she's wearing a nightgown. So maybe it's like some kind of weird illusion. She pulls away after that, though, and a split second seems to forget I'm even there. I wonder where my feet will take me next. There's always so much to see. I kind of like her just straight up, I'll just be in some random location, don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, she has begun walking away. Confused and a bit bewildered, I watch her as she walks away until she's out of sight. What an odd woman. Quite kind, but maybe not entirely there mentally. Nah, I feel like she's like knowing way more than she just let on right there. <laughs> she's probably the smartest thing there. I'm still a bit confused as I turn to go back inside the house. I have trouble going back to sleep. I sleep poorly. My thoughts confused and troubled. Who was that woman anyway? Something about her seemed familiar somehow. But to save my life, I can't point point why or where from. I'm assuming I could ask Heather or Niala. The unanswered questions haunt me, but they don't exactly scare me. Like the spirits in my house, the questions are there, and I'm not sure how to deal with it. But I'm familiar with their presence, and it doesn't bother me. She was strange, but calming. I just wish I'd gotten her name. She knew Niala. Oh, I unlocked a new trophy. Cool. I guess yeah. I flicker. I like getting trophies. I didn't know there was trophies in this. But cool. I guess I flicker out of consciousness at some point. Uh, my first awakening is a false one. I can't move. I'm asleep in my bed back on Earth. There are rats in the walls. I can hear them scratching incessantly through hidden passages in the bricks. Niala is sitting nearby, grinning at me with a malice I've never actually seen in her expression. Still, it's not much of a... Stretch, I know the stories that surrounded that girl. She's silly at times, but possibly the most dangerous being I've ever, ever encountered. And yet, in my dream, she's not a serious figure. Because before the sound of the rats becomes overwhelming, it stops abruptly when the woman from last night shows up. She lightly takes the purple book I originally found Nyala in and bonks her on the head with it. <laughs> nice. Nyala wails, runs to me, hugs me, and complains. She's bullying me! That's an interesting little dream. Maybe that is maybe that is Niala's mom. I'll, I'm willing to back that theory up now. I wake up shortly after. Heather's sitting silently at my bedside, reading a book. She notices immediately when I awaken, closing the book and setting it aside. Good morning, Master. We have some leftovers from breakfast yesterday. Wow, my character does not eat much at all. <laughs> you should eat before we leave for the lighthouse today. She heaves a slightly exasperated sigh. Niala insists on coming along. I can't dissuade her, as she has a few friends at the lighthouse. You might meet them. I can't even imagine what kind of friends y'all would have. They're either just as troublesome as her, or they have the patience of absolute saints. <laughs> Probably the second one. The former is way more likely than the latter. Still, I stand and make my way to the kitchen. Nyala's sitting on the windowsill, and, but when she sees me, she hops down and bounces over. Buggy! Hey, coming with us, huh? What's the lighthouse even like? It's a whole world located in a small pocket on Earth. Typically, lesser gods live there. There's a few odd creatures here and there that aren't gods, too. Creatures you'd describe as alien-looking and non-human tentacle creatures. Uh, cool. <laughs> I like non-human tentacle creatures. <laughs> I bite my... Alien. <laughs> <laughs> I bite my lip as I go and get the leftovers. They won't be... They won't be drowned... Draw, drawn. Wow, I my reading just went off for a second. They won't be drawn to me? <laughs> You're not that exciting, dummy. Shut up, Niala. <laughs> yeah, right. ignore Niala. <laughs> the creatures there are more familiar with oddities of varying strength than anything you'd see in uh, any place outside it. Even if you have a penchant to draw inhuman things towards you, or penchant, wow, what the freak? Uh, eyes? Uh, eyes, are you okay? I hope so. Uh, the rest of the anomalous activity at the lighthouse will more than likely overwhelm your own per personal aura. So this is, I'll say this, this is one good reason I have the VTuber model now. Because trying to do visual novels like this for like extended periods of time would get rough in the bird mask. Like when I did Doki Doki, I should have had this, this model ready. Because that was a lot of reading. But uh... 
So that's that's like I've said before, the the VTuber model will be ex like a lot of the time used for visual novels, and probably like every time now. <laughs> um, let's see. In short, you should be safe from anything that's not godly. By all means, I sure hope so. Everything is set. We're ready to go when you are, Master. I'm a bit uneasy, but with Niala and especially Heather there, everything should be fine, right? I'm ready to go. Then let's go. Wee! I do like how uh, Niala is like a little kid. She disappears in the blink. Heather grabs my hand. Whatever you do, Master, don't let go. I'm gonna let go. And just like that, we blink from the dreamscape and into pure darkness. And game over. We died. <laughs> The pitch blackness isn't there for long, but the pure nothing that is bouncing between realms leaves me numb. The only thing I can vaguely feel is the warmth from Heather's hand around mine. I'm not sure I imagine the other feelings. Somehow it transcends physical. Oh, uh, I'll transcend some physical, all right. It's like moving through thousands of sheets of slightly sticky bed beads. Uh, oh, man, someone already transcended the physical. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't feel that on my skin. Nah, I just feel the sticky beads everywhere. It's like it's brushing against the fabric of my being. Oh, it's thickening my soul, huh? The world materializes around us so quickly that I'm immediately disoriented. I don't notice that Heather has her arms around me until about 30 seconds after we arrive. She's still holding my hand. Niala is laughing at me, but her voice sounds way too loud in my ears. I'm dizzy. Heather's arms are the only thing keeping me from collapsing to a heap on the floor. How long did that take? It didn't feel long, but somehow it also felt like days. It takes me a little bit of time, but eventually I'm back on my feet. I take a few st unsteady steps before Heather risks letting go of me. Niala grins at me with amusement. Wait until you feel the trip home. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> well, cross that bridge later, please. Nothing like barfing and burning bridges. Uh, did I vomit? I looked at Heather who shakes her head. You're just a little green. Do you want to sit down before you go anywhere else, Master? Oh, wow, I can actually choose to just chillax or just go for it. I ain't no bitch. Let's go. No, no, I'll be alright. Thank you, though. Oh, Rhino Beetle toughing it out, huh? She has named, like, every basic species of bug at me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, then. If you look, look close, you can see the lighthouse in the distance. That's where we're headed. Before we go, though, I have a few questions. Should I ask them? I think it's questions about the blue girl. Yeah, let's ask her. Do you mind if I ask a few questions? Of course, go ahead. Oh, nothing about the blue girl, really? Nothing? Alright, what is the lighthouse exactly? Could you tell me once more what the lighthouse is exactly? Of course. The lighthouse is a secret location on Earth where lesser elder gods and creatures associated with them live. It's called that because the lighthouse is always the first thing a being sees upon entering this realm. We're sitting next to it right now, buggy. It is just stupid or not blind. <laughs> I've heard some beings need the time for their eyes to adjust to the lighting once the jump is made. Oh, so now they're stupid and blind. Heather <laughs> responds by summoning her scythe and jabbing her harshly in the stomach with the hilt. She wheezes and falls to the side. Maybe we should ask a different question. And uh, who lives here? Earlier you mentioned other gods and creatures live here. Can I get specifics who lives here? Oh, my friend Carrie does. She does. She, so does your enemy Sherry. Why must you remind me of her? Aside from them, to name a few, I'm guessing we're going to meet Carrie and Sherry. There's the wolf god Mithra. Ooh. She lives next to Sherry's woods. They have an agreement not to trespass on each other's land. There's a group of spider people to the east led by Aletha. Those cursed souls are always hungry, so we won't be going near there. It's too dangerous. There's also a yeti named Ethaqua in the north, and a cave dweller named Gwen underground near the mountains. Gwen is a pretty normal name. The north is too cold for you to survive, and Gwen, you don't want to see Gwen. <laughs> we don't talk about Gwen. That's just a name a couple. It's amazing what exists under your nose and you have no idea about, huh? No kidding. Nihal seems disappointed that I agreed and didn't get angry at her. Um, I guess who are we going to meet? Should I be prepared to meet anyone in particular? Carrie is the only guarantee. She's a draconic being of fire and is rather well... She's friends with Nyala. She'll tell you some things about her behavior. <laughs> Quite a bit, actually. Alright, we're good. As we begin to walk, my breathing returns to normal. My nausea and dizziness ebb away with time. 
We begin to make our way down the path towards the distant lighthouse. Wow, we didn't really uh, get closer, did we? Did we? I don't think so. We're about halfway to the lighthouse when Heather pauses in her steps. Nyala just keeps walking, though. She looks over her shoulder when I stop, too. Something wrong? We're being followed. No, we're not. I know if we were. Nyala folds her arms. Is that bad? Depends on her mood. I don't have much more time to consider it before I catch sight of a blur of red. Oh, hello! When my eyes lock on the figure, I'm a little stunned by her agility and grace. Alright, we got another one. Ooh. I'm not gonna lie, Dingo, I think you like this one a lot, too. Maybe you pick on that one. <laughs> right? Well, it'll be in the gallery, I think, so I can always send it to you. But yeah, I think, I think you'll like this one. Let's just say she's a fiery redhead. Actually, I'm not going to say anything, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dingo's like, send me picture now. <laughs> when my eyes lock on the figure... Okay, I already said that. She looks like a forest fire combined with a person. Combined with the flare of a pouncing wolf. Well, there you're getting descriptions of her anyway. Just a shame that wolf seems to want to rip off my face. <laughs> this probably isn't the first time I've felt so close to death. But I think it's the first time I've seen this been this mesmerized by the perpetrator of it. She never quite reaches me. Heather gets between us before the stranger can land or pounce on top of me. She grabs her and flings her towards Niala. The girl re redirects her energy and lands in, in all fours, skidding across the sand, stopping just at Niala's feet. She quickly pulls herself to her feet, straightening her back and running a hand through her hair. Niala's grinning. She definitely knew this girl was here and lied about it. They must be friends. Heather confirms my thoughts. Carrie, I figured as much. Hot damn. Yeah, not gonna lie, this one this one's pretty nice. So, one of you two get a new pet or Heather just adopted a roach she found in the house. Carrie, this person is not a roach. This person is my master, random Robin. The redhead Carrie looks a bit surprised, then just grins. Well, well, I'll be. You've been looking for them since we met. I guess that's why you won't let me play with them. You tend to break everything you play with, Carrie. Heather doesn't look quite annoyed or hateful of Carrie, as she does by Niella, but she still doesn't look thrilled. I suppose I could try being gentle, you know. No. <laughs> Master, or otherwise, you've never been fun. I guess I shouldn't have expected that to change. She shrugs and turns to Niala. Thanks for covering for me, by the way. No problem. <laughs> These two together seem like trouble at its finest. Heather rolls her eyes. I have business at the lighthouse, and I hardly trust you two to watch over my master. Master Random Robin, this way. Well, I'm bored, so I'm going to tag along. Niala seems excited and hugs Carrie's arm. Carrie grins in a way I can only describe as cocky. Still, she looks at over at me with a critical eye after a moment. She doesn't say anything, but it's pretty obvious that she thinks little of me. I hold her gaze for a few seconds before turning to Heather and moving to walk with her. Niala and Carrie back us up. They chatter a little as they walk walk about things, or talk, wait, wait, oh yeah, no, that's right. About things I don't really understand or care. Yeah, they kind of threw me off there. Still, Carrie and Niala border on competitive with each other, even in speech. When we're closer, Carrie challenges Niala to a foot race. They're both off before either Heather and I can comment. Heather is as stone-faced as ever, but I can sense waves of annoyance emanating from her. Those two seem exhausting. I was going to say like a handful, but I suppose that's the same thing. She's not one to interrupt me usually, so I can tell she's tense. I put my hand on her shoulder. She looks at me and manages the smallest of smiles. It is truly wonderful to have you here, Master. It's wonderful to be here with you. Oh, we're getting all like friendly with Heather. We reach the lighthouse after Carrie wins the race. It's no surprise to anyone. Well, no surprise to anyone but Nyala, who complains. No fair. Why are you so fast? She's taller, Nyala. She's bound to have an edge. <laughs> Don't blame it on my height, human. <laughs> I'm just more fit than Nyala. I spend more time outside roaming around. She might have an edge in games, but when it comes to physical activity, I'm truly better. Nyala pouts. So Nyala's crazy brains and your dumb muscle. Oh, I suppose I can see it. Niala bursts out laughing, and Heather quietly covers her mouth with her hand and looks looks away to mask her amusement. Carrie's not impressed. In fact, I think I've offended her. 
And where does that leave you, human? I posited her tone, raising an eyebrow. I mean, I don't have anything to do with it. What are you... Exactly. You have nothing to do with this. You're like a human. You're worth nothing in the eyes of us gods. Damn. She is pissed off. <laughs> That's probably true, but jeez. Was she really that offended? And what the hell does she mean, like a human? Now, uh, why is this thing even here? It's not like you to bring an ant into a gathering of gods. Even Niala seems in impressed, surprised by her aggression. This one's a little different, Carrie. Can't you tell? Not really. I don't think it really knows its place. Besides, plants have differently shaped leaves, but they're still leaves in the end. Look a little closer, Carrie. Niala's grin has turned a little wicked. You know how ladybugs and lady beetles look similar but have different aspects to them? I don't really get what you're going on about, but go on anyway. Look closer, Carrie. Ladybugs are docile. Lady beetles bite. Niala grabs my, my arm and then carries on, then probably pushes us together. Both of us look a little startled. We exchange a look. If my expression matches hers, we're both kind of displeased being in such close proximity. Still, she's without... She sighs and without really asking, grabs my hair and begins examining my face, turning my head with this way and that. Ow, hey! Heather doesn't look pleased, but she doesn't intervene, so I, I assume I'm going to be okay. Carrie pauses as we lock eyes, and she stares with a pensive expression for a long while. After a moment, she releases a soft, sharp laugh and lets me go. Where do you find these things, Niala? <laughs> I rub at the skin that was pulled during that process. Honestly, I kind of found her. She was in a book in my library. Is that so? She still seems a little disdainful. Well, I did just call her a dumb brawn. <laughs> it's the difference between being nothing and being something unpleasant. Niala seems content, though, so yay. If you two idiots are done, Heather finally cuts in, her expression serious. I had business here. You're being disruptive. Niala opens her mouth, but Carrie speaks first. Yeah, yeah, let's head inside, shall we? Honestly, no. The whole conversation has left my mood sour. I have questions again re regarding what they were talking about, but I know they won't give me a straight answer if I asked. Plus, I don't like Carrie. Ah, she's fine. Somehow I find her even less pleasant than than I found Niala when we first met. I'm used to condescension from the weird creatures around me, but something about her especially rubs me the wrong way. I'm sure I might get used to her if I spent time around her like with Niala. But right now, I need to lose the bitter taste in my mouth. I'd like to be alone. Is it okay if I stay outside, Heather? You three go ahead. Heather glances at me surprised at first, but seeming to understand quickly. Niala doesn't quite seem to understand. Carrie doesn't seem to really care one way or the other. Very well. Stay out here until we return. I'm always connected to you, Master, so don't worry about being in danger. If anything comes to, too close to you, I'll be back in an instant. Thanks, Heather. With that, the trio heads into the lighthouse. I watch them disappear before going to sit at the foot of the lighthouse. What the hell is Niala even talking about back there? Not for the first time. I wonder why I draw weirdness to me like this. Something about it has brought me here. It's more pleasant than most of my life experiences, but it still leaves just as many unanswered questions for me as it always does. And this time I'm not bored with it. It's been some time since I felt any emotional attachment to a situation or to anything I've run into. It's exciting and even kind of fun. But it brings me all of the negative feelings back with it too. I'm so used to not feeling them that I'm not sure what to do with them now that they're back. I grow restless, deciding to go down the hill and walk by the water. About to get drowned by another mermaid, apparently. I wonder what the ocean... What ocean could even... What, wait, wait, hang on. I wonder what ocean this would even count as. God, my fucking ability to read is slowly diminishing as I go. <laughs> it's a deep, dark blue. It's beautiful, but something about it just as mysterious as the rest of this place. I find myself sitting there for what feels like some time. I'm not sure what Heather is doing, but I appreciate the time it takes as much as I curse it. I need some time to think, but stewing in my thoughts also isn't really good for me. After a moment, though, I glimpse something odd from the corner of my eyes. Something green? What What in the world is that little green thing on shore? Oh, wait, there is a thing on shore. Hang on. It looks like a little baby Cthulhu. Like, I don't know if... Well, it's behind, Oh, I guess you guys can't see it. Hang on. Can I, so my VR, my VTuber models in the way. Eh, there you go. Can you see it now? Uh, <laughs> ah, there you go. Well, Mira could see it right away because she doesn't see the VTuber model, but you guys can't. Mm. But there you go. It's like a little baby Cthulhu model behind me. It occurs to me that that approaching it might be dangerous, but 
Heather will come here if anything dangerous is close, so it can't be that, right? I stand and quietly approach the strange green jelly thing on the sand. When I'm close enough, it suddenly pops up from the ground with little wings attached to its head. It makes some weird sounds at me. They don't sound aggressive, at least. Its large button eyes stare at me for a long time. I stare right back, uncertain of what to make of it. After a moment, it turns toward the ocean. At first, nothing happens, but then the ground begins to rumble. Oh. The ocean parts way, opening way to a deep green cavern in the sand. I stare in awe. The green creature quietly flutters down toward the new chasm, but before disappearing from sight, it turns slowly and looks at me. Even with its button eyes, it seems expectant. It wants me to follow. I look to the lighthouse on the precipice. Heather hasn't shown yet. Maybe it's safe. Or not. But I've dealt with mermaids and a kraken before. I've dealt with a fucking kraken before? <laughs> what the fuck? When? How? And how did I survive? Okay, what? I Okay, sure. I've dealt with a kraken before. Nothing. Not, I'm more worried about the mermaids. Yeah, okay, sure. The kraken, the, the, the giant squid monster that eats people. Nah, that's not a problem. Stealing myself, nod to the creature and begin to follow it. It makes a delightful sounding chirp. Oh, there's even like a little chirpy sound. <laughs> when I catch up to it, it slowly guides me down to the chasm. Am I about to meet like the god character? It's a long way down into the water. Soon the edges of the chasm changes from water to tall pillars of ancient stone. The whole... Wow, there's like a sinister end of game feel right here. The whole room holds a mysterious green glow. I think I'm about to meet the fifth character. It smells of salt water and moss, and yet there's something slightly as accurate about it, too. At the bottom of the descending walkway is an opening. It's marked with a tentacle like symbols on the top. It's almost like the green floating thing can sense my unease. It lands gently on my shoulder and chirps at me, frantically motioning with its wings to keep going. Would it be dangerous to pet it? Well, it's already on my shoulder. I guess I'm in trouble either way. I put my hand on its head. It feels kind of like a smooth rubber. It lets out a soft noise and presses into my hand. Aw, ain't that cute. I wonder what it wants from me exactly. Once once reached the main entrance, it leaps off... Okay, that was just... That threw me off again. It leaps off my shoulder and flies in through the opening. I hear a chirp followed by a cacophony of return chirps of varying pitch. Oh, it's all chirping. I quietly step through the entrance myself. Oh! Uh, there's a bunch of little baby Cthulhu's and a girl. This looks like the fifth girl in the starting picture. Is this Cthulhu in human form? It's Kawuu. It's a Cthulhu. It's a it's Kath damn girl. What's up? <laughs> That's the kind of Cthulhu I got. I utter. Mm -hmm. I utter a string of carefully selected four-letter words. What? I guess I might have skipped some dialogue. I don't know which green squid thing that was with me. There are dozens of them in this room. They fly in swirling patterns around the room's captive. Within a capsule of water chained to various pillars in the room is a girl. Her deep green hair flows wildly around her. The pillar under her feet feels sinister just from the appearance alone. Oh yeah, I didn't look at that. Oh, yeah, that's kind of spooky pillar. I find my, my staring for a long time at the site. I get the impression that this person has been here for a long time. I think I'm about to free Cthulhu into the world. That seems like a problem. It takes me a few moments, but I understand in a flash of realization what the green squid thing wanted from me. They want me to free her. I'm not sure how I reached the conclusion, but I'm absolutely certain of it. Despise that. I feel like that's not... They're probably just saying hello and... T telling me to check this out. <laughs> I narrow my eyes and focus. Approaching pillars, I test their strength. Despite seeming ancient, they are as sturdy as the day they were made, whenever that was. In order to touch the chains, I'm going to have to enter the water. Otherwise, they're too high up for me to reach. The lower ones are also attached to the platform. I don't think I can shake her much with those. So bracing myself for possible danger, I start by poking the water bubble. Nothing happens, so I press my hand into it next. I feel a mealing grid squeen button eyes on me as I do. It's unnerving. 
Still, I hop into the water bubble after one more shaky breath. The water is beyond freezing, chilling through my soul. I don't know if a human less familiar with these things would be able to handle it, honestly. I barely can. Oh, we're getting closer. I reach the floating girl and test the chains. They're pulled taut. There's no way they'll give any leeway for me to unwrap them. I suppose my best bet is to wake her up. Oh god, don't tell me she is Nyala's mom and I'm about to wake her up. I gently grab her shoulders and give her a firm shake. So, here, let me get rid of the thing real quick so people can get a clear look at her. There you go. So, whoever this is, she's sleeping in the middle of this prison. She looks like she's not... I don't even know what's going on. Like, she's got, she's got a gas mask on. And everything on her is based... So, each one is based off of a color scheme. Like I've noticed. Her eyelids flutter, but she doesn't wake. After a moment of thought, I try something else. I have to assume she's a god like the others. In that case, maybe I communicate with her in some in the same ways? I close my eyes and reach out my thoughts. Miss, you need to wake up. I get no... I'm guessing I'm thinking that to her. I get no initial response, but I do see her eyelids flutter again. This time they open a little more. I get a response after a moment. Quiet and groggy. Who are you? My name is Random Robin. Your green button-eyed squid friends brought me here. I get a sense of amusement from her. My familiars? Yes. It's getting kind of hard to think. The water is cold. I suppose then it, that it's time to wake up. And she's awakened. Her eyes calmly open. They glance to the left, then to the right. Jump a little to the left, a little to the right. A little to the left, a little to the right. I don't know. Anyway. And then she almost casually gives the chains one momentous pull. Just like that, the pillars cave in on themselves from the sheer power the girl applied to their her shackles. The squids, her familiars, begin to go absolutely wild. I can't hear them from in here, but I can see it. They swirl wildly, and I can only imagine they sound the sound they make. They flood out of the chamber as the structure and integrity of the place begins to falter from the now fallen pillars. The girl looks to me and wraps her arms around me as the bubble drops to the ground, dropping us both on the platform. I try to catch my breath, the cold sudden vanishing, leaving my body feeling like it's burning. She doesn't know she doesn't bother with the chain, she just holds me silently as she as she tears off down the hall after her familiars. Okay, we we escaping. My head swims and I don't exactly know where I am or where we go, ma'am. But when I finally am able to focus again, Okay, I read that sentence wrong, but that's okay. We're back on the black sand of the beach. Okay, here we go. Now we get a full body over. The girl with the green hair is crouched down on the ground one side of me. Ooh. Hey, Dingo, are you able to look at stuff yet? Mm, uh, about five minutes. Okay, well, I'm not going to wait on this one for five minutes. You're, <laughs> you're doomed. I mean... If you watch the video or something, you could always see her there, too. But let's see. Yeah. Uh, on the other side, Master. Hey, it's Heather. Oh, it's all of them. Niala, is this, is this one always getting into trouble like this? The buggy found me, so I'm going to have to say yes. <laughs> my head is swimming still. I slowly try to sit up, but Heather keeps a hand on my shoulder. Take a moment to breathe, Master. After a moment, I hear her ask, Who are you, and why did you seek out my Master's help? Mira, her name is Carolina. I just want to point that out. <laughs> That's awfully close to a couple other characters we have in our minds. You know what I'm saying? I'm Carolina. Uh -huh. I did not intend to call for your master. My familiars just found them. I choke out a laugh. My lungs hurt. It's my bad. I don't regret it, though. I look to Carolina. I attempt to smile. You okay? I hear Carrie burst out laughing nearby. Heather offers me a fond smile. I am alright. Better off than you. Master, I implore you not to be so reckless in the future. I may have been able to get you out in time, but when other gods are involved... I understand. I'm sorry. I'm not used to having anyone care whether I live or die, to be honest. Perhaps I shouldn't have been so careless. Still. I look at Carolina. Her expression is hard to read, but I'm... Yeah, I mean, she's wearing a fucking gas mask. You know, who knows what she's saying. Her expression is hard to read, but I'm grateful that she cared enough to get me out of there. Thanks. You're thanking me? I should be thanking you. I suppose. I attempt to sit up. Heather doesn't stop me this time. Niala bounds over to Caroline and quietly examines her. 
I didn't even know you were here. She's pouting, clearly displeased by her own lack of knowledge. Caroline and Niela stare at each other for a long while before Caroline quietly pinches both of her cheeks. Ah, don't pinch my cheeks. I'm not a child. She's definitely a child. She says sounding exactly like a child. I'm Niela. Fear me. Oh my god, she's one of those children. <laughs> Carolina, clearly unfazed, continued pulling her cheeks for a few more seconds before she stops. Not because she fears Niala, but simply because she grows bored of the activity. Or so I assume. As the two bicker, I slowly pull myself to my feet. Heather aids me. If I may ask, Heather. Of course. What exactly were you doing at the lighthouse? I never really got to the chance to ask. Heather gives a soft sigh. I'll show you. Can you walk it? I think so. Huh. Not bad recovery. At least you're not whining. For crying out loud. That's again? So... The red-haired one is obviously definitely brawny. Like, she's like, oh, okay, you're tough, I expect. But you're still whining. Excuse me? You heard me. You've been whining about my presence since we met. You can afford to do a recover a little better. Oh, it sounds like I'm about ready to die. <laughs> Carrie looks like she wants to burn me alive where I stand. Heather decides to rush, usher me along before she can even try. Niala seems to have missed the change in her own irritation at Carolina. Carolina, however, seems to have heard the exchange. Hard to read as ever she follows silently behind me and Heather. Carrie falls back, looking huffy beside Niala. That stupid pest would be dead now if, it, if not for Heather. She and Niala do not follow. Carrie, however, yells one more thing to, at me before they leave. How about you find me later on your own? See how tough you are then. Ooh. Heather sighs once they disappear into the distance. We're about halfway to the lighthouse when Carolina speaks up. Young one. She has a point. I will admit, I can't help but wonder, Master, how... How you would have lasted so long without assistance. Ouch. Everything on Earth became a bit repetitive after a few years. I developed strategies. I won't say that there wasn't a little bit of luck involved, though. A little? <laughs> Is now an appropriate time to suggest it was divine intervention? Because I genuinely couldn't tell you. It all blurs together in my head after a while. It's been a long time. This is the most unique situation I've probably encountered ever. Let's see. Heather cuts off the line of questioning as we reach the lighthouse. She quickly undoes the lock and we step into the first floor of the lighthouse. At first I see nothing of note. It looks a dusty abandoned old lighthouse room. But then Heather snaps her fingers. Oh. And I'm about to be sacrificed for a cult. It's immediately hard to overlook the giant rune circle in the middle of the room. It's surrounded by smaller purple runes. No two alike. Even looking at them makes me feel a bit off kilter. I can feel intense power emanating from all the runes. What are these for? They're protection wards. Protection f what from? Carolina picks up some implications for quicker than I do. Someone might come after you, Master. Or, uh, yeah. That, make, that takes a moment to sink in. Wait, why? Just when I thought I was done asking that question, my old master is a very powerful deity. And you, my true master, you're a little bit of an odd case. You sound like you know something about me that I don't. Yes and no. Remember, we're all gods, Master. It should be with rel relative ease that we can find information on g any given being we choose. I even used to reside within a library of universal knowledge. And yet there's nothing I can figure out about you, your situation. You're as strange and curious as anything you draw to you. I can find nothing. Nothing? How do you know I'm even your Master, then? It's the only thing I'm certain of. It's a feeling. I can't explain it, but I hope one day you'll understand it as I do. Who is your old master? Caroline seems pretty good at keeping things on track. Her name is Yv Yvonne. I will do everything in my power to protect you from her, master. And it starts with this. I look back de to the room. The power almost overwhelming still, but after my encounter with the cold water, I can tolerate it. Even Niala helped. Yeah, well, she doesn't like Yvonne either. I insisted she help. She cracks a faint grin. I didn't give her much of a chance to be on choice, to be honest. I hope you understand, then, Master, that we can't let you return to to this room. It's a high concentration of energy. It distracts from you and blocks you out. But this place on its own would be easiest to locate you at. Uh huh. So let's step out and lock up. I promise I'll keep you safe. She snaps her fingers once more. The runes fade from view. I can still feel them, though. The three of us make our way out of the building. With the lighthouse locked up, uh, everyone goes in different directions. Heather is sure she'll watch over me, so if anything happens, she'll be there. I've got some free time now. 
Who should I spend time with? Oh, I can go see all of them. Let's see. I can go see what Niala's doing. I can go go face off with Carrie and see if I don't die to the dragon woman. <laughs> I can go visit Heather again. Or I can go visit the recently rescued Carolina. Hmm. I'm tempted to go face off with the fire woman and just see how badass she is. Out of all these options, anyway. Hmm. Oh, wait, I have an idea. We can we can technically go to all all of them. Oh, yeah, I forget. I remember I remember trying this out for like one minute. <laughs> you filthy fucking cheat. Mm -hmm. Well, I only did it for like twenty minutes. I didn't do the mm -hmm. whole thing, and I haven't played it for like months, so I don't remember. All right, so there we go. Now 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 I have. I kind of want to see how all these options play out. I won't. I might not do them for this video, but I'll do them on my own time. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. You know what? That fire dragon wants to go. Let's do this. It was a challenge Carrie left me. I don't entirely know why I decided to seek her out. Maybe I just want to see if she has some other less nasty side of her. So against my better judgment, I go off to find her. Let's do this. It's not too difficult to find her. She must hear me approaching as she turns to face me. She stares for a moment, then laughs. Well, well, you really do have a lot of nerve. I didn't actually expect to see you come find me. Don't make me regret it too quickly. We lock eyes and I hold her gaze. Eventually, she snorts and shakes her head. First break to break eye contact. Even if I tried to attack you, Heather would show up and intervene. Worthless. What, your challenge? She glares, but after a moment, she smirks. You know what? Let's race. I mean, you can't win, but I can't just let you leave without an experience. Consider it a gift from me to you. I consider it. Then I shrug. I'm told it's rude to turn down gifts. I've never actually received one either. So, sure, you're on. She watches me with a pensive look for a few minutes. Then she grins again. So don't bore me, loser. At least make me put some effort into it. An effort will be made. <laughs> I'm actually not a bad runner. I've had to outrun all sorts of different creatures before. Again! This guy's dealt with a kraken, mermaids trying to drown him, vampires. The, what the f... What is going on with... How is he not dead already? Something had to have killed him at some point. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I just thought of something. Looking at this character, she looks like Yoko from Gurren Lagann. Yeah. Like, look at that. The style of her clothes, everything. That's straight up Yoko from Gurren Lagann. Hold up. All she, all she's missing is like a big-ass sniper rifle. And the removal hey, of the horns. Sniper? Oh, so, Dingo, do you, have you ever heard of Gurren Lagann? Oh. Okay, so it's an anime, and it's about robots, but one character is called Yoko, and she uses a big-ass sniper against the robots. Someone just sent me the link. The, someone look up a picture of her. I'm gonna have Please. to do like, I might, I might have to do like a side-by-side -side comparison of these two. To be honest. But, alright, anyway. But at least just send me the name of it in DM. Uh, yeah, do you know how to uh, just type in Yoko Gurren Lagann yeah, and uh, well, Y-O-K-O -O. <laughs> Mira, do you know how to do it? Do you know how to spell Gurren Lagann? Copy image Yeah, there and... you go. Yeah, show it to Dingo. <laughs> Please. Boom. Dingo. So, imagine that character, if you're looking at a picture of Yoko now, but slightly, like, with horns and a couple other differences. Oh. That's what the fire god is looking like. It took me a second to realize that, but after another glance at her, yeah, she looks basically like Yoko. That's hilarious. I don't think I can outrun a god, but I'll try. Ready? Uh, no. What road are we even running? For a split second, she almost looks a bit sheepish. It go it's gone quickly. Uh, I have to spell out everything for you. It's your home turf, not mine, Carrie. To the lighthouse, to the water, then back to where we are here. She snaps her fingers, and a small creature quietly pops up by her shoulder. Oh, that's cute! It's like a little dragon. With a mask. He'll mark the end for us. He's cute. Ready to keep itself safe from COVID. Ah. Uh, 
The dragon thing blinks up at me with its large eyes. He's my familiar. Pretty great, you know? She begins giving the dragon a little rub behind his horns and makes a happy purr-like noise. Aw, she doesn't... So she doesn't treat everything with disdain. Just most things. Good to know. The little dragon hops from her shoulder down to the ground. He flies gently over the grass so we can see him, even from a distance. So, ready? As I will be. And you're not Nihila, so I assume you won't cheat. Carrie barely stifles a snicker. I won't have to. That's all I ask. You arrange our positions, and the dragon chirps our cue to start running. Carrie immediately gets better sprint on me, and as best as I can, I tear off after her. No denying it, she's incredibly quick. I'm not faster than her, but if I try my best, I might be able to keep up, at least. I manage to keep pace behind her until we make our way down the hill towards the lighthouse. That's when things take a little bit of an unexpected turn. I guess falling is what happens when you're running too fast down a hill, sure. I just didn't expect a god to have the same issue. Ah! I hear her fall before I see it, and I force myself to speed up at the edge of the hill. I wince at the nasty tumble. She pretty much falls all the way down to the lighthouse. If she were human, she'd probably have a couple of sprains to accompany her scrapes and bruises for that one. I slow down significantly, but I'm still in a hurry to reach her. Aw, oh, she's down. I hold out my hand to help her up. She gives me a slightly unhappy look, clearly both in pain and embarrassed. She slaps my hand away and begins trying to stand on her own. I'm not having it. I crouch down and wrap my arms around her shoulder to help her to her feet. She winces and begs to com begins to complain almost immediately. I don't need your help. I mean, with that current look, you might. <laughs> I didn't say he did. I don't know what exactly, but something in my voice silences her. She gives me a surprised look. That looked really painful. Are you okay? You're missing your chance to get ahead of me, you know. She's practically pouting now. I guess she and Niala really do have some things in common. Where'd the fun go when that be? <laughs> I don't know why I said go. <laughs> I'm probably pushing my luck with this, but I say it anyway. Wasn't your gift to me supposed to be my failure? I said it already. I already. I said it already. It'd be. It rude. To, uh. No, yeah, no, that, that's an A, not an S. Okay, that yeah, that's throwing me off. That li that little bit of misspelling has got me all janked up. That's okay though. It's rude to turn down gifts. She's still clearly in pain, but despite herself, she begins to laugh. After as we both work on getting her steadied on her feet, she gives me a look and roughly elbows me in the ribs. This causes her to fall back over as I wince and release her. Worth it. <laughs> Judging from the look on her face, she thinks it's worth it too. You're absolute garbage. Look who's talking. Instead of helping her to her feet again, I sit down beside her. This time, neither of us argue as I help dust off the parts of her shoulder and back. She dusts off the fabric of her shirt, her chest, and parts of her legs. Are you in pain? Even if I was, what could you do about it? She doesn't seem to mean it in an insult this time, just as a statement. She's not wrong, as much as I hate to admit it. I don't know. I can sit with you and wait till you feel better. And I can tell Niala you won if that'll heal your pride quicker. Carrie laughs, sighs, then declares, Tell Niala that I tripped, and even Heather won't be able to save you. A hollow threat, but I still laugh. Yeah, yeah. We sit silently on the ground for a while. No doubt Carrie will heal quickly, far quicker than a human would. Still, I sit with her until she's able to stand on her own. Eventually, her familiar joins us too. We don't talk much, mostly we just sit and relax. When she can move again, I let her know I need to find Heather so I can head back to the house. I don't know exactly what she thinks, but she accompanies me. I think we're friends now, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. After the events of the day, we all regroup at the top of the hill, where Heather and I teleported in. Heather puts her hand on my shoulder, gently as her scan the other three. I assume you two are staying here? She nods towards Carrie and Carolina as she addresses them. Obviously. Carolina, in contrast, just nods. I'm coming back to the house with Random Robin! <laughs> Heather rolls her eyes. Both of you, you could keep your eyes out for any of you own. Yvonne's subordinates. Yeah, keep an eye out for that old hag. I doubt she'll come at me, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to watch out for intruders or strangers. I will monitor the lighthouse. Thank you both. I'm surprised Carolina isn't coming back with me. It's time to go back to the house. It was great meeting you both. Well, only kind of for you. I mo motioned vaguely at Carrie. Yeah, yeah, ditto, you pest. May you arrive home safely. Thanks, Carolina. With the pleasantries covered, Heather once more takes my arm. Barely two or three days, and so much has happened. Even now I'm positive, a lot of strangeness in, is in my future. Even more than usual, I mean. There's no doubt that it'll revolve around the uh, one of these strange Lovecraftian gods I have met. 
Why do I feel like this is the end of it? As my mind quietly wonders where all of this would lead, Heather, Niala, and I blink out of the lighthouse. Because this is supposed to be a demo. Oh, my lord. I hope you're here with the good news this time. Question mark? I assume that's a no. Useless. Don't just fall quiet. Tell me what happened. Yes, well, it's Haster. That traitor? How could she have found it first? It's not just her either. It seems like Nyarlath... Wait, wait. Nyarlathotep has returned too. But I... Uh, go on. I have been trying to locate this anomaly you mentioned. However, it seems that both Haster and... Uh, oh, that's their real names. Haster is Heather. And Nyarlathotep is Nyala. Gotcha. Yeah, thank God she gave them, like, easier names to know. <laughs> I would have lost my mind trying to say those throughout this whole story. <laughs> Even with my powers, they interfere. All I've been able to see is the lighthouse region. I went down to investigate myself, but the place is sealed off. Uh, likely to prevent from rune tampering. And you couldn't unlock it? No. Pathetic. This was supposed to be an easy task, douth. Hmm. <laughs> You do it, then. What was that? Nothing, my lord. Just an apology. You better be sorry. But setting that aside, I will order my eyes down in the lighthouse region to watch out for Hester, Nyarlathotep, and that thing. You're dismissed. Oh, so this is... E wow, they just straight up called her out as Yvonne. I suppose this is going to be harder than I thought. No matter. I will see to it that anything that stands in my way is eliminated. That purple freak, even Hester... That fluke of existence cannot be allowed to remain. I won't allow it. Holy shit. Okay, so I'm something very important. And once again, it's gone. Once it's gone, I will destroy her too. I will not fail. The universe is rightfully mine. Okay, so she's obviously trying to take over the world. And that's... Hey, look, that's the end of the demo. So, let's see. You've reached the end of the demo. Thank you for playing through Lovecraft. It means a lot to... A oh. Can I go look at... Okay. Hey, Dingo, let me know when you can look at the screen again, because you can see all five girls right now. Take, take a screenshot. I literally just started another hour recording. <laughs> you started recording yeah, this whole time? Yeah, bad. Oh, I've had to do it hour by hour, because I'm not streaming. Oh! That's the next I can do for this. Oh. Well, well, it's mainly just the title screen of the game, so, I mean, you'd be able to look at it pretty easily. Okay. But, uh, oh, here we go. I can see the ending note again. Okay. So, let me go ahead and check this out here. Uh, thank you for playing through Lovecraft. It means a lot to us, and all your support has kept us going. See you in the final release. The full version is due sometime in 2020. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing that got delayed and such, because it's now past 2020. COVID. Yeah. It, it, COVID. it basically. And thank you, Per Orange and Say Soundy. Thank you both. Per Orange, uh, I played your previous game, Lost Girl, and I loved it, and I like this one. And then I like the bottom. It says, what? I was just getting into it. <laughs> but that has been the Lovecraft demo. So for everyone who watched... Oh, see, I, yeah, I can go back and get some more of these little cutscenes going on, too. So, but anyway, if you uh, watched it to the end here... I thank you for committing the time. I enjoyed it. I'm sure Mira and Dingo enjoyed as much as they could of it. Mm -hmm. Well, Dingo didn't see much of it, but he can see some screenshots later. Uh, yeah, he, it's he, like he, an yeah, basically. <laughs> except, except I'm the one reading it with all my inability to read, so have fun with that. <laughs> um, if you liked it, hit the like button. If you have any suggestions for games to play... And, uh, or just want to say hello, uh, leave it in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already and would like to, that'd be really cool of you. Also, subscribe to Mira's channel and Dingo's as well. Uh, yeah, Ding or Mira's channel's, uh, Smab. That's her YouTube name. So go find her. I'll put links in the descriptions. And Jay wasn't here for long, but make sure you go subscribe to Jay too. Uh, Slavic J Leaf. I will put the descriptions below so that you can find them. Yeah. And um, that's it. So until next time, have a good one.